computer you are still in yeah yeah he is still there yes can you see it now ah yes yes tushar okay uh, i i need to close this okay well thank thank you very much uh, bala dr bala and everyone else for uh your kind introduction as well as in waiting for me to join this group unfortunately uh there were several competing uh, uh, issues that that invariably landed up every month for me to postpone so i'm i'm extremely sorry about that uh but in but in any case i'm i'm always happy to join this group always happy to come down and visit india whenever i have an opportunity because this is something i believe uh we really need to share and i think the the it the the experience from both sides I and mean, the experience from the us uh and western world is important for the developing countries but at the same time it's important to understand that uh, the developing world experience which comes out of necessity often times as dr bala already mentioned uh clearly is important for us uh to to uh, understand and possibly learn from that uh, because uh, as we all know chronic kidney disease and end stage kidney disease management is very expensive and whatever we can do to first of all help our patients and secondly reduce the cost so it becomes easy on the society i think we have to look at it from a larger perspective too so uh with with that kind of a uh, uh, understanding i am always open uh, and to to interact with anyone please feel free to communicate contact me anywhere uh, uh any any possible means and in my email or whatsapp uh or or even through twitter i i am i'm fairly active so that that's uh, an open invitation to anyone to uh, collaborate uh i have nothing to disclose as far as these uh, this presentation is concerned i really need to thank uh, official first breakthrough initiative uh, where i have borrowed some of my early slides uh, and i've also would like to thank uh, debbie brower meyer she is one of the senior most uh, dialysis nurses who has been advocating uh, cannulation techniques uh, as well as teaching uh, not just the nursing workforce or the technician workforce but also physicians and has been very active with the uh, american society of diagnostic and interventional nephrology and she has added a, a, a great lot of value to the importance of uh, cannulation and cannulation skills uh before i start off uh, with my presentation on buttonhole specific what i would like to at least for the younger audience i would like to point out that uh there are three commonly used practices for cannulating a fistula uh the most common one is the rope ladder pattern where we select the segment of the fistula where we cannulate with each dialysis treatment at a different site and same for the venous needle and we rotate this so that we avoid what we call as area cannulation or one side cannulation that can often lead to a, a breakdown of the endothelium and aneurysm or pseudo aneurysm formation uh the concept of buttonhole essentially is where we create a subcutaneous tunnel which becomes a fibrotic channel into the fistula and and using a blunt needle we access the fistula through that tunnel and maintaining the constant angle and using blunt needles that's most important we we access the fistula to the same site and through the same tunnel and for those of you who are interested in learning more about it as uh, bala already mentioned uh, kidney 360 uh, about 2 years ago has a very nice uh, collection of uh, experiences and and uh some studies and review articles from various aspects as far as physicians as far as nurses patient experience uh and and also a nice editorial by one of my close friends uh, anil agarwal which i'm sure a lot of you have met because he's been an integral part of uh, avatar 2 uh and as professor bhalla mentioned uh it's it's often the need like for the shant it was a need uh based practice and uh, nephrologists creating surgeries 
was a need-based practice. Buttonhole technique is not new. It's not innovative. It's more than 25 years old because these slides are from the first and this was uh, uh, the program was initiated in early 2000, 2003, 2004. And, and this, these first initial set of slides I'm going to use from the Fischler first slide deck. And, and, uh, and, and here it's clearly uh, mentioned about Dr. Twardowski from Poland, who 25 years ago, because of the deficiency or limited supplies for AV fistula needles, uh, they were reusing these needles. And as they were reusing, like, uh, and I'm sure you have experienced this too, uh, the senior nephrologists, uh, the senior physicians in the group here that we were reusing needles for blood draws in India, we were reusing needles for intramuscular injections and those needles ultimately become dull and blunt. And, and they use these dull needles to the same site uh, and, and, and then the technique was then defined as a buttonhole technique which really became uh, the basis of how the buttonhole cannulation is being used or being recommended. And, and, and I'm not going to go into a lot of details from the history here, but the method here in which the individuals, uh, and, and, and oftentimes it's self cannulation, these fistulas were going to the exact spot at the same angle and, at this, and the same depth of penetration. And these are the key aspects of buttonhole uh, technique of cannulation. Eventually a scar develops and it becomes a fibrotic tract, which makes it easy for a blunt needle to penetrate the fistula uh, vein. And, and the advantages at that time that were believed were it prolongs the AV lifespan, it reduces pain because now there is a fibrotic tract, reduces bleeding, infiltration, infection, and it virtually eliminates uh, infiltrations and hematoma formations. And, and it certainly helps patients towards self-care and self-dialysis. Uh, but at the same time, it requires that the same cannulator or the same person cannulates the fistula because one has to be very clear about maintaining the same angle, same location, same depth. And, and uh, again, if a different person does it, it can, it can change and change the track and eventually lead to more problems rather than, rather than help the patients. Uh, and again, this is all from early 2000 where, where buttonhole was not recommended for every patient. It was recommended for selected group of patients. Uh, and, and the more efficient way was for patients who were self cannulating or who were on home dialysis and who had limited area for cannulation. So again, the aspect being if the cannulating segment is long enough, one can use the rope ladder pattern, which is, which is certainly uh, a better way of doing it to preserve the access patency. Uh, even the 2019 uh, National Kidney Foundation Vascular Access Guidelines Committee uh, still recommends that AV fistula cannulation using rope ladder pattern or rope ladder technique is, is still the preferred method. Uh, when, and, and when preservation of the access is critical uh, in a shorter segment, maybe one can attempt a uh, buttonhole technique. Uh, I've already described this. We've, we've described about uh, disadvantages and barriers. And, and, and again, the major, I, I cannot re-emphasize the fact that one has to be a single cannulation technique or a single person cannulating the fistula so that the track angle is maintained and uh, we do not create multiple tracks, which essentially can lead to one site itis or one cannulation and lead to aneurysm formations. Uh, another big aspect that was often talked about is scab removal. How do we remove the scab before preparing the skin for needle insertion? And again, if, they, if there is any shortcuts or compromise in scab removal, the risk of infection goes up tremendously. Uh, selecting buttonhole sites, again, uh, one has to examine the fistula properly, maintain uh, a, a record of the arterial and venous pressures at the cannulation sites, which essentially will help us define if there is any underlying stenosis. Uh, 
and then look for a relatively straight segment of the fistula, which can then be used for creating buttonholes. Uh, we, we use a minimum of one inch or one and a half inch uh, between the needle tips so that the recirculation rate is reduced. Uh, and preferably, uh, we maintain the needle direction in the same side. Uh, again, there are patients where uh, if the segment is too small, we have used anti-grade and retrograde uh, directions for inflow and outflow. Uh, again, this, this uh, clearly in, uh, highlights that one person should do all the buttonhole cannulations. Aseptic technique is important and establish one site for arterial and one site for venous. I mean, this is the original concept, one site for arterial and one site for venous. And I will discuss uh, that this concept probably is changing. So typically it takes about six to eight cannulations using a sharp fistula needle to establish the buttonhole and the track. Uh, in diabetic patients, it might take a little longer as the healing is slow and, and may take up to 12 cannulations. But again, this has to be assessed on an visual base. And, and uh, here, this, this kind of gives an idea as to how a patient, once a buttonhole is developed, the patient can self-cannulate uh, their access and, and either in, in center dialysis or at home, uh, this would be a preferable method if the patient is, is opting for a buttonhole technique. Um, Again, there are, these are some of the slides that go over how one creates the buttonhole, perform a physical examination, select a straight segment, at least have a one and a half to two inch distance between the tips, uh, an aseptic technique to remove the scabs, and then use sharp needles initially, and then change it out to uh, a blunt needle for uh, once the buttonhole is developed for, for long-term cannulation. An angle has to be maintained. This angle has to be persistent and constant, and hence a single cannulator needs to perform this cannulation. Once there is a flashback, like in any other uh, sharp needle cannulation, once there's a flashback, the needle angle needs to be lowered and advanced into the position. Uh, proper anchoring is equally important while the uh, buttonhole is being developed, because this is important because you really want to create just one track and minimum trauma in the skin and subcutaneous tissue. So uh, the needle should not be mobile around the puncture site. And the whole idea behind this, and this is uh, courtesy of uh, a very senior vascular surgeon, Dr. Larry Spurgel, where he had shown that the sharp needle goes through the venous flap. And, and once the venous flap and the track is well established, a blunt needle can easily penetrate through the venous, uh, venous flap. And that's the concept behind using uh, uh, a, a constant site or buttonhole cannulation of a fistula. And these are how two clean buttonholes should look like. Uh, changing the needle from uh, uh, sharp needles to blunt needles, again, can be something that has to be individually assessed. And, and once the track is established, it is, it's very important to use sharp needles I mean, to get away from sharp needles and use blunt needles only. And, and that adds a, 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 an amount of cost because blunt needles are not that freely available and it adds to the cost factor for, for maintaining a dialysis treatment. Uh, and, and this is the difference between, between the sharp needle, which has a very sharp bevel that cuts through the skin, whereas a blunt needle is, is blunt, as, as, as the name suggests, and has a very large uh, back eye. And, and oftentimes, as I said, this has to be uh, visualized, assessed, and, and then changed from sharp needle to a blunt needle. And, I, I, and some of these slides are reputations only to drive in the point that sharp needles, if are used after the track is established, then it defeats the whole purpose of, of creating a buttonhole. Um, again, this is how an established buttonhole will look after five days where, where uh, a, a ridge starts developing and, and the hole is clearly identified and, this, and it's still not ready for uh, blunt needle insertion. 
when the switch is made to blunt needle, excessive force should not be used. Uh, it's important that we use the same gauge, sharp and blunt needles. If you're using a 16 gauge needle, a 16 gauge blunt needle should be used uh, and ensure that uh, appropriate needle gauge is ordered by the physician as per the ordered blood flow rate, uh, which again, uh, in, in India, I think by and large, most patients dialyze with 250 or 300 blood flow. So 16 or 17 gauge needle would be more than adequate. Here in the US, uh, a lot of patients dialyze with 400 or 450 blood flow. So it's essential that the needle size is adequately used 15 or even 14 gauge needles. Uh, I'm just going to see some of these slides use uh, anti-stick blunt bevel needle uh, and, and anyone familiar with the, with, with the buttonhole technique can cannulate and establish this in, in an established site. So again, even though anyone can cannulate, I would recommend that uh, with the information that we have, we now have from several uh, multi-site studies as well as single center studies that as far as possible, the buttonholes should be cannulated either by the same person or by the patients themselves. Scab removal is again, a big, big, big issue. It was always an issue even 25 years ago and it still has become an issue where how do we remove the scab Oftentimes, the infection happens because there is break in the aseptic technique. The scab that forms is supposed to form when the needle is withdrawn until the next dialysis treatment. And the scab needs to be removed in a very asymptomatic, aseptic technique where, where the scab is soaked uh, and, and softly scrubbed either with a Q-tip or, or a gauze piece before the next needle in, in, in cannulation is attempted. Uh, one thing that, that often led to infections here in the, some of the centers in the US, and, and that has led to the increased incidence of infection in these patients who had buttonhole was the needle that was being used to cannulate, the tip of that needle was used to remove the scab. So now the scab is often harbored with bacteria. Now you scrape off the scab with the tip of the needle and use the same needle to cannulate, you are introducing, directly introducing infection and the tunnel can get infected or even patient can get uh, back to bloodstream infection. So scab removal is, is, is very, very, very important and details have to be uh, monitored because if the person cannulating, uh, especially the techs, if they are not, from, not uh, aware of these complications, they can certainly uh, try to cut corners. So do's and don'ts for scab removal, removal is don't flip the scab off with the needle, which was again, a very common thing here. Uh, and, and most of the in-center dialysis programs stopped using buttonholes. Uh, don't use a, st a sterile needle to cut the patient's skin and allow the patients to, or don't allow the patients to pick at their scabs. The goal should be to soak the uh, scab, use aseptic tweezers or use gauze piece if it's adequately soaked and then softly remove the scab before you introduce the needle. So the key takeaways of all of this, so this is all we, that we know for the last 25 plus years that buttonhole cannulation is more for specific population. Uh, it's not necessarily for everyone. Uh, very commonly used, at least in the centers where they use buttonhole cannulation, is those patients who have really short cannulation segments where rope bladder technique cannot be implemented, patients who are on home dialysis or self-cannulating, uh, uh, and, and again, patients who really have a very high level of anxiety or fear of sharp needles, there we can attempt to use buttonhole cannulations, but again, proper technique, uh, which includes one a uh, single cannulator, I've emphasized enough that a single cannulator uh, is, is key to having uh, a good res results out of buttonhole cannulation. It's most ideal with self cannulation because the patient really knows uh, how much deep is the fistula, what angle should be used, what pressure should be used. And, and, and so a, a patient is their own guide and it certainly works well for home dialysis patients. 
at least in principle, and I will show you some data which really creates the controversy. Aseptic technique is very important. And then uh, switching over to blunt needles uh, is key to maintaining the patency and educating both patient and staff is, is, is important. So here comes the question. Uh, this was all that we know from a need-based uh, technique that, was, that has evolved 25, 30 years ago. Early results and as, as early as in early 2000s, uh, there, there were studies from single centers that showed that buttonhole technique had less aneurysm formation. So here you can see 70 patients in each group, patients who had rope ladder, they had, they had a, almost 50% uh, risk of uh, uh, aneurysm formation with the buttonhole. There was very low risk for buttonhole formation, uh, for aneurysm formation. Hematoma with cannulation, again, in the same group they evaluated and the buttonhole group had a very low incidence of hematoma. So, so some of these, so this is one of the representatives from the, and it's fairly large study, at least from the early 2000s that, that clearly promoted the use and showed benefit of buttonhole uh, technique for cannulation. But there still were some centers that, that were seeing a very high incidence of infection. Uh, so the early benefits seen in these uh, studies were not being duplicated in the studies that came subsequently in the 2010, 10, 11, 12 uh, area. And, and the reasons they highlighted was, uh, again, something that we had known uh, and Fistula first had recommended those in, in their guidelines in, 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 when, when, they, when, they, when they talked about buttonhole cannulations, lack of education, number one, Poor cleaning and scrubbing techniques, so shortcuts for asepsis, poor cannulation technique, not switching over to blunt needles, not using a single cannulator. And, and, and again, centers that had high incidence of infection in general, so they had uh, poorly educated uh, staff or poor practices that, that really had high incidence of uh, infection from buttonholes. And, and here's an example of how a buttonhole can cause uh, uh, cellulitis around, around the puncture site. Again, the, the, the track has not really been formed. It's cannulating at the same site right over the fistula. So as you can see here, this is the cannulation segment. Ideally, the, the hole should be a little bit two to three millimeters away from the vessel wall and then creating a two, three millimeter track and then entering into the, in, into the uh, vein, which, which, would, which would prevent uh, same site cellulitis. So this is this is something of poorly created example of poorly created uh, buttonhole. A uh, large study was done in 2014. Uh, this was done in 171 units spread over nine countries, over 7,000 patients, and they looked at access survival and cannulation. If the technique was proper, did buttonhole offer any additional advantage of access survival? And and Clearly, as you can see here, uh, buttonhole, rope ladder, and area technique, the access survival if the technique itself was used properly in a large group of patients, multiple units, so again, all kinds of different practices, the access survival was no different. So over these last five, seven years, what has evolved is infection has become really a major risk that is, evolved, that is involved with a buttonhole cannulation technique. And, and that has remained controversial because there are some single center studies from uh, patients who are on home dialysis or self cannulating versus a fair number of studies from uh, in-center dialysis have shown that the risk of infection can vary. And, and there are very strong proponents of buttonhole technique, especially those who have seen good results and uh, a larger uh, community-based studies have shown that the risk of infection and the incidence of infection is much higher. So where do we stand at this point? And again, this is something uh, that is still evolving. The jury is out. We really don't know whether we should be embarking on buttonhole cannulation on everyone. I, I still feel it is more for a specific population. And, and what I will show you is it started off in 2012 from a large Canadian study. It was a randomized control trial where they looked at standard cannulation, which is the rope ladder cannulation versus buttonhole needling. Uh, 
and they looked at the incidence of hematoma, they looked at the pain score and looked at the infection rate. And clearly, as you can see here, the uh, hematoma rate was lower, yes, but the pain score was higher in that population. So it really did not matter whether the patients were cannulated with blunt needles or sharp needles, they had a fairly similar in, uh, pain score. But more importantly, when we look at the infection rate, the infection rate was almost double in the buttonhole compared to the standard needling or the rope ladder needling. So there were only three episodes of bacteremia uh, in the standard needling and nine episodes of, uh, uh, of, of abscess formation in the buttonhole group. So, I mean, I, I, I take that back. Three episodes, episodes of bacteremia and nine episodes of uh, abscess in the buttonhole group, none in the uh, rope ladder or the standard needling group. So yes, the infection rate was much higher and there, were significant, there was significant morbidity in the group that had but buttonhole cannulation. So this was a randomized study. So it was not, not uh, a, a retrospective study, but a randomized study, which uh, obviously has a, a, a big impact on, on how we analyze uh, data. Another large um, study that, that looked at home dialysis as well as uh, different kinds of randomized comparison trials, observational trials, uh, before and after comparison observational trials, and, and a whole host of trials. And as you can see here, the buttonhole technique, if we, if we look at uh, the, the total infection rate, they clearly had a much higher infection rate in every group. Uh, which, which, as you can see, it, the, the increased infection rate on the right of the, of the line uh, and, and, and overall clearly buttonhole had a higher rate of infection compared to the rope ladder with a, a lot of studies, all, both including observational as well as randomized trials. And in the same study, they also looked at uh, single center of home hemodialysis where they looked at home hemodialysis patients who had buttonhole versus uh, rope ladder cannulation. And the belief that if it's the same patient self cannulation, the risk is lower, in, at least in this Canadian study, uh, they did not see that. In fact, they saw that the buttonhole total infections were much higher, systemic infections were much higher, and local infections were much higher. So overall, their infection rate was higher in the buttonhole technique rate compared to the uh, rope ladder technique. So, so the, in, the initial thought process that proper technique, single patient cannulation probably would reduce the risk of infection, uh, at least in this study from Canada did not really show that. This is now a more recent study that again comes from a Canadian group and they looked at uh, the feasibility of, of, of uh, doing a randomized trial for home dialysis patients with buttonhole versus step ladder. So again, the early 2014 study from Canada was a, a single center. Patients who were on home dialysis were already doing it as more of an observational study, uh, whereas a more robust information can always be achieved from a randomized study. So this group attempted to look at whether it's possible to randomize patients who are on home dialysis and, and randomize them to either buttonhole or step ladder and, and, and see if there was any change in or difference in their infection rate and other uh, outcomes. Uh, and, and, and they looked at seven Canadian hospitals from 2013 to 2015. And, 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 and this study clearly points out that how difficult these clinical uh, issues are to study in a very scientific manner. So these were seven Canadian hospitals. They had a total of 158 patients. So again, it was not a single center. It was multi-center, a fairly large group of home hemodialysis patients, 158. Of those, they found that 50 of these patients were eligible for enrollment. They had their own eligible criteria. And of those 50, only 14 agreed to participate in this trial. So it, from starting from 158, it dropped down to 14 patients. And, and the reason uh, oftentimes they were not ready to, to, to uh, participate in the study, majority of them were because 
uh, they were happy with whatever technique they were using and they were not willing to go in for any kind of a study. Uh, the cannula, they, they looked then of those 14 patients, eight had buttonhole, six had step ladder. Uh, they looked at the cannulation time uh, to train the technique. They looked at the total training time. So again, button cannulation took less time to train. They had, they had uh, um, pain score was somewhat lower, but not statistically significant. And, 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 and so again, the point being with 14 patients, how do you study a, a larger outcome uh, from, from a small, study, small patient population of 14 patients. So the, the conclusion drawn at the end of this study was it's a, it's a very difficult clinical uh, problem to study in a very scientific manner using a randomized controlled trial. So we still have to depend on large cohort observational trials. And this is another trial from Denmark where they have looked over a five year period it was a prospective observational cohort study five facilities, uh, and, and they looked at the infection in AVF patients who had AVF-related infection, staph aureus infection from buttonhole versus step ladder. And, and again, in this large group, they had uh, 48 incidents of bacteremia, 43 in the buttonhole group, five in the step ladder group. And, and uh, what it led to was uh, 742 days in the hospital when they had total uh, buttonhole group were admitted for bacteremia versus 89 days for the step ladder group. So clearly uh, in their cohort of uh, 286 patients over five hemodialysis centers, patients who had buttonhole had a higher incidence of infection, obviously that added to more morbidity uh, and, and also to healthcare costs because the longer the stay in the hospital, more costs uh, that, that the society and the patients have to uh, bear. And more recently, so this is from 2020, and this has come from a CDC. Uh, this is a national healthcare safety network. So they have evaluated the risk of vascular access infection associated with uh, buttonhole cannulation. Uh, and, and what this study looked at was uh, the total number of patients who had access-related infection from 2013 to 2014, so just one year. There were about 2,500 access-related infections, uh, 3,000 local site infections, and 13,000 received IV antibiotics uh, for patients that were, were using buttonhole cannulation. 52% of these patients had staph aureus in bloodstream infection. And the bottom line being buttonhole cannulation was associated with a significantly higher risk for access related bloodstream infection. So it's, the risk was much higher, 2.6 times. And uh, the local access site infection was again very high, one and a half times. So, so this is the data from uh, a nationally collected uh, in-center hemodialysis patient population. And, and so their conclusion was buttonhole cannulation was associated with a higher risk of vascular access related infection than rope ladder technique in the in-center hemodialysis patients. And decisions regarding the use of buttonhole cannulation in dialysis center should take into account the high risk for infection. What it boils down to is uh, not every patient should be cannulated using buttonhole technique. One should be very specific and selective. And, and again, the selection criteria is what we already discussed. Uh, the, the review article that we published in Kidney, Kidney 360 about a year and a half ago uh, outlines some of the steps again in, in a more user-friendly manner, if one, one would say as to how to remove the scabs, how to perform hand hygiene, how to soak the scab with alcohol pads and, and then use blunt needles using aseptic technique. What this brings us to is, yes, the controversy is still open, that in selected patients, possibly it may work, but in a, in a larger, as a, as a standard use for cannulation, one should not be using it because the risk of infection is higher and one can never uh, be guarantee that, that there will be a single cannulator or 
the aseptic technique will not be violated. And, and so to that effect, uh, this, this group now is, is looking at safe needling of arteriovenous fistula in patients uh, using what they call as a must, multiple single cannulation technique. Now this, this is a, a pilot study that they are, they are looking at. They, have not, they, have, they, they registered the study in October of 2021. Uh, they are planning to enroll patients over the next year or so, so we don't have any information. Uh, obviously, the study is still under underway, but but the concept really is is very interesting. Where they have combined the rope ladder technique and the buttonhole technique, and they are they and the advantage is so so to to describe it in little more details. So they create three separate sites for arterial cannulations and three separate sites for venous cannulation. So that's very similar to a rope ladder technique. So, so if you have to say Monday, Wednesday, Friday for arterial, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for venous, they use the sharp needle every time to cannulate the Monday hole and of both arterial and venous. And, and on Wednesday, they use this Wednesday hole and then Friday, they use the Friday hole, and then come, come back on Wednesday, Monday again, they use the Monday hole. So they maintain the site, but essentially they have now used multiple sites and using sharp needles. Uh, so it's not necessarily one site itis. So it, the Monday site that's cannulated gets uh, roughly five days to heal before the next cannulation is attempted. Uh, and the same goes for the Wednesday and Friday site. So, the, the postulate, the hypothesis is that the risk of aneurysm formation will be much lower. There is no reason to have the same cannulator. There's no reason to form a tunnel and maintain the same angle. There is no scab that is formed that has to be penetrated using blunt needle and, and one can use sharp needles to cut down on the cost. So in, in principle, this is, this is a little bit uh, innovative uh, combining the, uh, the rope ladder technique and the buttonhole technique. And one has to see uh, whether, whether this will be something that uh, eventually uh, work better than the current rope ladder technique that's used as a standard uh, cannulation method. So I would end it here with, with the take home message that dialysis access cannulation is totally skill dependent. It's very critical, which we all know, we have all seen problems and poor technique can lead to significant complications. Uh, as far as buttonhole cannulation, yes, in a larger population as a, as, as a uh, routine use probably is not uh, advisable with the high risk of infections. Uh, in a very select population, I think it may be beneficial and one can use it. There is no definitive guidelines that we could reach a consensus uh, as, a, as, as the uh, 2019 uh, KDOKI guidelines core group. So again, rope ladder for the time being, rope ladder is our best option. And we should uh, wait for the, in the next maybe year or two, we'll have some uh, information, additional information come through from uh, the MUST trial. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, happy to answer any question. And before I go to any questions, uh, Dr. Bala had asked me about uh, shunt use. Yes, I have placed those shunts. I, I definitely liked it in those days when I was uh, practicing in Bombay. Uh, and and I, I also converted some of those patients who had shunt to uh, proximal uh, radiocephalic fistula or mid forearm fistula. Uh, the, the problem, the, the, the challenges, more than problem, the challenges uh, we see with the current patient population is, I, I, at least here on the, in, in, in the Western world, very high incidence of obesity, uh, very high incidence of diabetes, which again, India is a hub of diabetes. So atherosclerosis and the vessel uh, quality has changed. So I'm not sure whether it would work the same way in, in, as, as a larger option, again, as a, as, as a tool in selective population in young patients, probably it will work. Uh, and and uh, maybe we need an innovation of the shunt where, where I think the, the problem was 
mainly with the connectors between the arterial and the venous end, and those connectors would kink, and or or the or the patient would accidentally get the shunt segment, uh, external segment of the shunt hooked up onto something and get it pulled out with a lot of bleeding issues. Uh, there's, there is, I, I think there is, there is, there is uh, potential for some improvement on that shunt concept because it really, it really helps reduce and save, reduce uh, bacterial infection or central venous infections and stenosis. Uh, so it definitely has advantages. Uh, and, and again, uh, like, like everything else with vascular access, we really need to uh, be selective and, and maybe if we can come up with a new design for the chunt, it, it, would, be, it, would, it would be worthwhile. Some, and, and the vascular way to introduce the tips and then connect the tubes outside uh, and have, have a connector that's, that's more robust than the flimsy one that we have, with the original uh, shunt that we use. Uh, that's that's my take on that, uh, and I see there is one hand up. But thank you again for your attention, and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Tushar. And uh, let's see the comments from the audience on the panel about their experience with the buttonhole and whether they are continuing it or uh, what is their view on that. Because from what you, you know, after fully hearing from you, it looks that the jury is more or less completely out against a buttonhole. Can I take it that way? In, in, in a larger sense, yes. I mean, if you want to use that as a buttonhole for every patient in the dialysis unit, I don't think that's, uh, that, that's a practice and that's recommended. I mean, uh, it's, it's harder to keep track of asepsis uh, the dialysis staff, and I'm sure even you guys face the same challenge where the technicians move from one site, one unit to another unit, one company to another company. And then if you have a different person cannulating, then you run into the issue of creating multiple tracks and uh, more of a problem. <clears throat> yes. Dr. Bajpajani, hey, uh, great talk. I'm sorry I missed the first few minutes. Uh, I was a little bit late. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is, you know, I usually recommend our patients or at least my patients when they have buttonhole to have two sets of buttonhole simply because if you have an infection in one, uh, you can use the other set. The second thing I have is if the reason is a lot of uh, staph infection. So like in PD catheters where at the exercise we put mupirocin or gent, why can't we put Clenda cream? Uh, you know, one day after the wound heals, just keep applying and see what happens. At least we will decrease the risk of uh, some gram-positive and anaerobic infection. Good, good questions, Adrian. Uh, the, the first point of creating two buttonholes, I think that's very much what the MUST trial is probably heading towards. Uh, so the two buttonhole is, is what we have used and innovated in our practices in some sites. It's not that it has been uh, scientifically or evaluated, but it logis log logically it makes sense. And, and yes, I mean, if, if, we, if we have enough room for it, uh, again, keeping everything else, uh, as mentioned, single cannulators, good aseptic techniques, uh, preferably self cannulation. I think I think it should work uh, work better than just creating two buttonholes. Create four buttonholes. Uh, as far as local ointments, again, uh, the studies done with uh, with the catheter as far uh, and, and and CDC guidelines don't really recommend uh, regular use of uh, mupirocin or clindamycin. At, at, at the exit side, or this here, it would be very similar uh, over the scab. Uh, risk of, first of all, we don't know whether it will be effective. And two, uh, is, are, we, are we potentially increasing the risk for antibiotic resistance? So I, I really don't have an answer to that. I don't think there are any studies that have uh, looked at it. Yeah, it was just a thought. Um in my mind because Clinda is easily available. It is cheap also, I'm sure in India too, uh, Clinda is very cheap. And uh, I guess unless you do a study, you won't know what is happening. I mean, this is, this is something that, yes, I mean, uh, 
would be easy to do in a clinical setting. Uh, to do a clinical trial in the US is so expensive. Uh, clinical trial in the US, uh, in, in India, if it is properly done at multiple sites, I, I think it, ha it has merit and that's, that's where I think we can learn from them. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian, for your entry. Uh, sure. then... uh, it's, it's a wonderful talk. Uh, I just have two questions. Uh, one is how how can you confirm that the tunnel is well formed? When when will you change it into a blunt uh, candela? Is there uh, any way we can uh, identify the induration like what we normally do, or is the ease of cannulation? It's it's the ease of cannulation. So generally, the the practice has been with them, this, and this uh, this is this is from again the experienced nurses who cannulate. So a lot of our dialysis. Uh, physical examination things, maturation of AV fistula is all dependent on who is examining the patient. I mean, we clearly know that nurses who have a, a long experience with cannulation, uh, they know when the fistula is matured and, and, and the, their physical examination correlates so well with, with uh, ultrasound uh, objective evaluation. Uh, and, and the same holds true when it, when it comes to switching from uh, sharp needles to blunt needles. And, and by and large, after about six to eight sharp cannulations, that's the average time when, when a blunt needle cannulation should be attempted. If the blunt needle cannulation requires a lot of force, then maybe the track is not yet developed and, and one should continue with sharp cannulations and re-attempt after 12 cannulations. And that's, that's kind of the general uh, principle of uh, establishing uh, access to using blunt needles. Okay, is the risk of bleeding from button hole is more or is equal to the rope ladder pet? Because you, you, you form a uh, track, right? So right. is there always a risk of bleeding more? I know you project a slide of hematoma, right? That is more with the rope ladder than this. Correct. So, so, so the hematoma is only if there are multiple tracks that are formed and it leads to infiltration. But the risk of bleeding after needle withdrawal- On the puncture site, yeah. Yes, so risk of bleeding at the puncture site is, is not higher because you, you hold pressure and the clot plug is formed in the, in the track itself, which- you, know, you need to have a prolonged compression compared to the rope ladder or- No, 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 not, not that has been at least uh, uh, I have experienced in, in few patients, uh, one of few of my patients who have it, and nor have I heard from any of uh, and, and any of the experienced nurses. And I would I would refer my interactions with Debbie, who I have acknowledged in the beginning, and and some of her counterparts. Okay, what is your experience with the graft? Is it advisable? Or... No, definitely not. So graft is not to be cannulated using buttonhole technique. Yeah. This is technique only for AV fistula. Graft buttonhole is out of question. If you okay. try buttonhole on graft, you are 100% really guaranteed yeah. to create uh, a pseudoaneurysm. Okay. I can jump in on Dr. Chandrasekharan's uh, question. I, I, I am a dialysis patient myself, been using buttonhole for the last 16 years. Uh, my experience has been with buttonhole, sir. The, candidate, the Clotting time is much less than when we use sharp needles. That has been my personal experience. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm so glad, Kamal, Mr. Shah, that you are you are on here because uh, the, the earlier when I started this presentation, Kidney 360 Journal uh, article, there is there is a patient perspective on there, and and the the patient who wrote that article uh, is is really for. Uh, using buttonholes. So again, it, it just highlights the point, patient selection is so important. True. Yeah, actually, I was going to ask the perspective of the technicians and the patient. I'm glad he you know, mentioned that he feels easier with the buttonhole. And what do you think would be the answer from the technician side, dialysis nurses, the preference so, so senior nurses who are familiar with this and, and who get to cannulate the same patients, uh, they are happy with their home dialysis patients, not in-center patients. Right. So they, train the home dialysis, they, they train their home dialysis patients uh, and, and uh, uh, 
sub subsequently, yes, I mean, those patients become self cannulating. They, they start self cannulating. Availability of blunt uh, needles in India, anybody has experience? So availability even in the U.S. in, in most in-center hemodialysis centers is is uh, difficult, not available. Um, and then the last uh, question: uh, resurgence of AV shunt. Is there any chance, if not uh, by and large, but in selected situations? Uh, again, as I mentioned, I think the AV shunt concept, I like it because I have used it and, and I, I agree completely with uh, Professor Bhalla that uh, four weeks later you switch out and, and the big advantage is you are still preserving the central veins, uh, which with the catheter, no matter what you do, you are increasing the risk for stenosis, occlusion and, and, and future uh, challenges with an AV fistula, whether it's proximal vista, wherever or draft. Uh, but but the design is not something from the 90s that I would want to use. I would like to use a design that may have uh, an endovascular way of introducing the vessel tips, which I think should be possible, and, and then have the external tubes uh, in, in connected with, with a more robust connector rather than, rather than uh, the flimsy connector that we had before. Okay. What is this AV shunt that you guys are talking about? I have no idea. Adrian was, uh, is quite young then. I mean, I didn't know you were. Yes, so Ad Adrian, so there are, there are I, I, I don't know if you ever did a cut down in India, Venus cut down. Yes. When you were, yes. You did, okay. Yes. So, so there are, you do a cut down on the arterial side and a cut down on the venous yes. side. These are only two, 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 two cut downs, that's all. Yes, so two cut I downs. See. You put a vessel tip and then the vessel tip is connected to a tube that comes out externally through a skin oh. hole. Oh, and, I and, see. And it's, it's connected yes. outside as a loop. Yeah, connected. Yeah. And it is, it is Quinton, Quinton and Stribner shunt. Quinton yes. and Stribner shunt. I think there's one famous one where it's in the leg. Uh, Oh, yes, yeah. that's that's in the art in, in the textbook. Yes. Yes. Okay. And that 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 picture was provided by Dr. Sundar, your mentor. That's right. <laughs> so that's what you guys are talking about. Okay, makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tushar. I think we'll move on to the next talk from Dr. Vailaravin.